He, uh, he expected uh, that he would be killed. He thought that uh, ultimately it was going to be because of his uh, opposition to the war in Vietnam, and perhaps more importantly because of his uh, tremendous commitment to bring economic justice uh, to this republic. Because when he, when he entered that fray, he, when he began to talk about the redistribution of wealth, you have to understand he was uh, coming up against the most powerful forces in this land. We have stood up for nonviolence with all of our hearts, and those who will make this peaceful revolution impossible will make a violent revolution inevitable. And it didn't cost the nation one penny to integrate lunch counters. Well. It didn't cost the nation one penny to guarantee the right to vote. But now we are dealing with issues that cannot be solved without the nation spending billions of dollars and undergoing a radical redistribution of economic power. I want to make it very clear that I'm going to continue with all of my might, with all of my energy, and with all of my action to oppose that abominable, evil, unjust war in Vietnam. King begins to see that what was happening in Vietnam was also connected with, with poverty and connected with racism and classism. And that's when he begins to think about another march. And this march is going to be a march to transform the economic situation of people in this country. Some propose marching the poor to the nation's capital to force government action on the problems of poverty. In August, Marion Wright took the idea of a poor people's march on Washington to her friend, Martin King. He immediately understood that it was right, um, and um, we chatted a bit about how it would be done, but there was never any discussion about whether that was the right thing to do. The Poor People's Campaign would recruit among all races, bring them to Washington, commit massive civil disobedience, force the government to respond, a nonviolent army of the poor. Uh, very frankly, this is a search for an alternative to riots. and. Uh, if the nation doesn't respond to us, as we labor that two or three months, however long it takes, uh, God only knows what we will face in terms of chaos. This is a kind of last desperate demand for the nation to respond to nonviolence. One has to remember that over 100 cities burned in America in 1967. It was the worst rioting in the history of the country had taken place. And the rioting was the result of poverty, growing poverty, deprivation of people. And, uh, and Martin King committing himself to bring a half million people to Washington, not just uh, on a march, but uh, for an encampment to stay there until the Congress changed its priorities, was a devastating potential uh, for, for those who resided in the halls of power in America. They could, they, they, they thought the nation would burn. They thought the capital uh, would be subject to a mighty revolution. Uh, Martin King was at the center of all of this. He was the key figure of dissent and opposition leadership in America. They were really and truly afraid of us coming to Washington. And uh, they were determined to try to stop us.